we've got a pile of engraved wooden bases. We've got back panels. Ten off. We've got mercury compensated pendulum parts, tops and bottoms, and partly assembled front parts. And ten lovely copper coiled bits. Gears, springs, copper parts. Beautiful dials, very pleased with those. Well, whilst I'm waiting for the MP3 uh, module for Victoria, I have nearly run out of chronographs. The first 10, I think, have been sold, so I am going to put together another 10, which is very exciting. Brilliant! I've cut out 10 of these parts, 10 of the backgrounds. They fit together beautifully. I'll show you, in fact. Um, these, I'd changed them, I'd forgotten that with, I'd forgotten to save wood, I, did, I stopped using the original jigsaw style corners and went to these ones simply because it saved a load of material. I could get everything sort of fitted. Look at that. I mean, that is brilliant. Oh, I just love laser cutters and laser cutting. It's me out of mischief. It's brilliant. I mean, look at that. Fantastic. And it's holding it square and everything. Turn it around so you can just see it. There we are. So I know that this is, look at that, there's no wobbling. It just fits together. You don't even need any glue. That's amazing. So that's the back one. And then we have the front one. The frontispiece, piece, as I like to call it. That glues on there, and there you can see there's the little notch for the hanging, and in there it goes on the front. That is fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is to run beads of glue around, put them together, and put weight on them. I won't bore you with that process. I'll get back to you once I've got all these together. Oh, I'm very pleased with how things are going. Or alternatively, not pleased with how things regarding Krakens are going. What a pain. This has cost me a fortune in that graphics card, which coincidentally I found actually slows down video editing. You would have thought it would have speeded up, but anyway, it's another story. The latest idea is I printed this on a raft, uh, having sliced it in half. So I've got this bit, which is printed perfectly, and that does look beautiful. And then I printed the tentacles on another raft and peeled them off. The idea being that these would then print properly because it just can't cope with this. And then this should somehow glue onto here, but it's it's doing my head in, to be honest with you, somehow or other. Um, there are the other tentacles that haven't broken off this yet. It's such a pain. I mean, it's, it's just right there. I'll have a think about it. Now, someone kindly suggested, uh, I think on Facebook, um, trying to angle it to print it, because sometimes if you get the angle just right, so keeping it all together, but slightly having it angled, sometimes it does solve the problem. And I will try that, because it would look brilliant if I could get this finished. Amazing. Amazingly difficult. Anyway, you know me, never give up. Tenacious to the last. So, watch this space. I've glued all 10 together, it's number 16, lovely engravings on the front and as you can see fit together beautifully, use good quality PVA, that's great. So now I'm going to stain them, staining just, I just love the look of dark wood, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> Here's some I prepared earlier that are drawing. You can see what I love about wood, just the variety. Synthetic materials are all really standard, but with wood you don't know what you're going to get. The beautiful grain, it's just so good, it's lovely. Look at that, ten beautifully finished stained backgrounds, each individually numbered. And because of mild OCD, I've had to stack them in the right order. Lovely. Now I'm going to start on the pendulums, I think. And obviously the pendulums were really complicated to design and put together. What I ended up doing, because at that stage I was, well, I was constantly looking at ways of speeding up production and manufacture. So the 
caps at the top and bottom of the pendulum. I, I drilled out in the end I think, but I started by getting the laser cutter to cut them out. If you look at that you can see it's cut at low power about halfway through for the ends of the pieces of wire, the copper wire. Same with the middle. Thankfully I haven't got much 10mm acrylic to cut out this time because it does take an awfully long time. Here's the 10mm acrylic and to get it to cut it goes at 1.5mm a second at a power of 40 and like I've said before the manufacturers and HPC laser really suggested not to go above 40% so I think I believe that it means that the laser tube lasts so much longer and the optics and everything else so but it's good anyway. So with this design here you can see there are these the funny little bits they've got a very faint blue outline which might come out in the video I don't know but if I zoom into one of them you can see how I've achieved it. Each of the colours represents a different um, cutting power and speed. Thankfully I managed to record but if we zoom into one of these you can see it is made up of loads and loads of lines. I can't remember how far they are apart but that's what does the engraving, it's just cutting but at a lower, um, lower power, higher speed. So I'm going to try this and see how it goes. The other thing I did do actually was to drill some more vent holes underneath this. This sits in a tray that hasn't really got any ventilation underneath. So I've drilled I think three or four holes along the front so that air can get drawn out. All the air in the whole machine gets sucked downwards towards the bottom of the sheet machine in through vents and gaps all round. So I'm hoping that will also remove any gases that collect. Right, the moment of truth, 13 minutes later. I will speed up the video. Well, some bits of. Ooh! Very hot. But, look at that. Wow. And, we have, don't seem to have had a barbecue underneath. That is brilliant. And you can see now, there's bits for the, bo ooh, bits for the bottom of the pendulum. Um, that's because the glass tube goes in there and the mercury model sticks up through the bottom after much experimentation previously with glue getting everywhere I realized that was the way to do it and there's the top of the pendulum um, with the holes for the two captive um, copper things. I was thinking about just focusing on the pendulums making them but then I started looking at all the component drawings I've got and as you can see with this one this is the three millimeter acrylic and I've drawn them all out and worked out all the different bits and everything else so I thought no Let's just cut out each sheet at a time and get the right number of bits rather than having to go back and try and figure out what I've missed. So I'll cut this, start this cutting, and then I will start working on the pressure vessels. Pressure vessels, I hear you cry. What could he use for them? Well, thanks to a group of youths, I assume they're youths, who enjoy inhaling nitrous oxide after an evening session in the road outside our house, they very kindly left with about a hundred of these. The state they must have been in, I really can't imagine a hundred of these. There's probably quite a lot of nitrous oxide in each one. These are used by chefs to dispense cream, I believe. They fit into um, dispensers that they use on a regular basis. So what I'm going to do first of all, they're so beautiful, such beautiful things. That's just criminal. Anyway, uh, I need to drill a 3.3 millimeter hole in the end of each one because the lovely copper twirly bit, which I'll tell you is a pain to make, but I've got a cunning plan, so I'll never stop improving. This is 3.3 millimeters diameter, so I'm going to assume that's something derived from an imperial measurement. So I need to drill out the top of each of these so that this will fit into it. Who says laser cutters haven't got rhythm? So a little bit more lathe work. The lovely gentle jaws of the three jaw chuck because I don't want to damage the surface. It doesn't have to be very firm at all. 
three by five millimeter drill. Safety spectacles, because if something goes wrong on a lathe, it can go wrong rather suddenly and dramatically. So I will bring the drill. I'm not going to bother to centre drill it because there's a little thin metal sheet across the end which seals it until it gets punctured by the machine or a youth, whichever way you want to look at it. So it should just find its own centre. Let's give it a go. create a jig for the job and sure enough it seems like only three years two years I don't know ago here's the jig luckily I keep all my jigs in my jig drawer and you put one of these in here you seal it just tighten the top down so it can't leap out and then there's two holes to drill I think 3.3 mil out so I'll set the depth of the pillar drill to the right depth so I can do that. There's also, interestingly, a hole in the back, and I was trying to think what on earth I'd done that for. But then I remembered it's because I can then drip glue in. The, what was, the problem I was having originally with the original pendulums was trying to glue this in with super glue, obviously, and super glue getting everywhere and then clouding up the, the, the white sort of smoky effect on the inside and trying to, oh, it's just a pain. So many went wrong. And then I thought, oh, forget that. So I ended up drilling a hole into the back of each one and then assembling it. And then I dropped the, I dropped the super glue into that hole and then capillary reaction takes it all around and glues it together without ruining it is always a boon. So what I'll do I'll set this up and then drill lots of 3.3 millimeter holes. Drop it in there, tighten the lid and then that's it. Then the copper rod will fit really nicely in there not be difficult and I know exactly how deep each of the holes is as well which means I can cut all the copper to the right length and the hole in the middle which I've forgotten about that's much cleaner so accept the 12mm pipe much better three millimeter finished cutting and engraving look at that Lots and lots of very pretty things. And then there's the glue hole. There we go. So, so to recap, what have we got? We've got the bottoms of the pendulums, the tops, an assortment of assorted washer things. I can't remember what they're for. I've broken one of these because the first time I drilled a glue hole I pushed it down too quickly and it shattered it so I had to recut another one. What a joy. And then we've got the these bits. These are the on the bottom of the pendulum. Why do something simple when you can engrove a lovely sum that glues on there. Now in order to do that, because the laser cut doesn't cut completely flat, so I slightly at an angle, I'm going to sand a teach a little bit off each of these. I've just discovered what these are for. These should be glued around them to these three holes, the supporting screw holes. But because I didn't bother reading the instructions that I'd written a couple of years ago, and why would you, I didn't do that. So what I'm going to do is to stick all these on and then just stain the tops of them. Right, I've got the bottoms of the pendulums glued onto the bottom part of the pendulum and the tops and hooks of the pendulums glued onto the tops of the pendulums. 
Now I'm working on the hour displays. The good thing about this is to ensure that there's a nice smooth rotation I've cut out these blocks that are about 16 or 17 millimeters diameter from 10 millimeter acrylic and because I've cut a hole ready in the front piece all I need to do ideally rough it up because this is at the back and then glue these on and they don't have to be perfect either as long as you get them roughly in the middle that's the important thing because once they're set, once they're dry I can then use this hole to centre the right size this is slightly smaller, I think this is 3.5mm diameter and I need a 4.1mm diameter hole for the uh, stainless steel rivet to go through so that means this will guide the drill bit in and regardless of whether this is off a little bit it will still line up perfectly with the middle uh, thank you all another day I've spray painted the pendulum tops bottoms and the lovely hour displays so they've had their first coat all oh, that's been happening I thought I'd attempt some archaeology. So far, I'm back four years. But I really am running out of room. I've nearly sold the rest of the, the second batch of net net throb wells as well. So I'm faced with having to do an awful lot in a very small space. That's an absolute shambles. Whilst that's been going on, I've also been cutting out the uh, two millimeter uh, acrylic parts of the design. Each of these sheets I've managed to cram on four lots, so I've got to do another sheet and a half. This is always a joyful experience, it's amazing. Just taking off all the bits you don't want, hopefully. Look at that, not much waste there at all. That can be recycled because it's brand new acrylic. lovely the remainder of the numbers and dolls and hands engraved and cut out. I didn't need a full set as I don't know why but last time at least most of them I cut six out so that's great so I only had to do four extra bits. And these have come up beautifully. I didn't actually have to spray the back because there was enough under spray to cover that. It just looks so gorgeous and painted up. So the first thing I need to do with the new digits is to clean off all the soot and the muck with isopropyl alcohol which is a bit of a pain but I'll put a good film on and uh, get on with that. Here's a before and after you can see the soot and also the edges if you touch them sort of give off leave a black mark whereas once it's cleaned up see it's far more vibrant really nice and contrasty the difference between the black and white Oh, the roller coaster that is working at Steamhead. I started sticking these little spacers on the back, and this is fine, this one. The first one I did, I snapped them off afterwards and then broke that bit. I noticed that the hole in this bit down here was in the wrong place. It's meant to be the centre of the circle on the outside. I thought, oh no. And I realised that on half of the drawings, they bits, the hole wasn't grouped properly and I'd moved them around to rearrange them more effectively on the plastic sheet and forgotten to move all the holes. They'd escaped the move. What I did luckily though is to drill the hole in the right place with a drill and it looks fine. When you put a rivet through this one or a screw head, it actually does look fine. I mean, the clock faces had all sorts of intricate little cutouts and bits, fiddly bits. So I'm not going to recut these ones. 
but I'm because I think that would be really nice. In fact, I may well add it to the um, final design. But I need to cut out one more to replace this one that's snap. And today's film of choice is Creep. It's on pause at the moment, but Creep's brilliant. It's a horror film with a nasty creature played by Sean Harris, who's actually brilliant in it. And it's set largely on the London Underground in the tunnels and things, which is very exciting. Another little top tip. I'm gluing these on to this piece of plastic and I need the hole in the plastic to line up perfectly with a hole in that. Now what I'm using to get them to line up is a 4.1mm drill bit because these have got a slight they're M4 so to allow an M4 screw through so just nice and firm with 4.1 and that means that if I line it up by poking it in there put the glue around there it'll be fine and then remove the drill bit. The problem is the super glue is very thin which is brilliant so I can line it up put a drop of glue on twist this round just to spread the glue hold it in place lift this out theoretically but what happens is the glue runs in and then obviously there's a nice small gap a narrow gap all round inside so it sticks the drill bit in which is very unhelpful so to get to my point if you're ever faced with something like this suddenly thought of it and it works beautifully get a countersink and just just a titchy little bit off the inside the fluff out then let's do this and I expect it will stick permanently this time there we are, I'm going to hold that like that one little dob of glue twist it round, sorry if I'm all fingers and thumbs yeah and it works because the cutting the little chamfer on the inside of there stops the glue's path to get to the drill bit. Hey, thank you very much, and it's working beautifully. Again, it's always nice to find a way of solving a problem that's spoiling your enjoyment of building things. I'm just gluing on these bits, and it's quite useful. So, 10 millimeter thick acrylic, full power, 1.5 millimeters a second to cut the outside and the inside and then engrave a little slot where the ball chain can pull in and the hole in which it fits I made three titchy little dimples I think they're sort of half a millimetre diameter holes just three of them that means and again it's all about making using super glue easy this through experimentation because obviously there's lots of variables but Lots of experimentation until you find the right hole size that just pushes in nicely. I can get that angled into the right place so it's vertical. And then to fix it in, all you do is to put a little dot, three little dots of super glue. And you probably can't see it on the camera, but that runs round inside. It doesn't come out the front, so it doesn't spoil the front panel and then you just sit it to one side and do the next one what I've done so far it's little things like that that make it so much easier and more efficient and effective and enjoyable to put together this is the craziness of which I speak remember when I was designing it I was thinking I know rather than having to engrave separate labels I could engrave the name out of wood fantastic and it worked beautifully when I come to design the hour dial rather than doing something simple I can't up the most complicated things so what I'm doing at the moment so what I'm doing is spending an inordinate amount of time with a lovely new bottle of isopropyl alcohol I don't know why but I've only had um, sprays before aerosols whereas this is fantastic I just dip the tissue on the top so I'm dipping the tissue on the top, cleaning the edges of each of these digits out. I've decided the easiest way of doing it is to do that as many times as possible for all of them and then I'm going to clean the front of each one. You can see what I mean by the soot. It's really sooty. Just finished spraying all of these up. All but one, I suppose I should be grateful for that, fine. And this one has got a blemish there. I don't know why. And obviously, I mean it has actually got blemish there as well, which will be hidden by the dial, but this, if it was about four millimetres lower, it would be hidden by that. But obviously, 
Nah. So I've got to get some wet and dry because this is, I think it's thousand grade. You put it water on it because then it stops it from clogging up. And it's so fine and this paint is so lovely that even though it's been drying probably about half an hour now, it's still drying off just there you are, wet and dry, look at that. A bit of tissue. And there we are. And you can see how thousand gauge, thousand grade, is so fine that it even blends in the, the edge of paint, the thickness of paint. And the rest of that's fine, which I'm pleased about. So I'll go ahead and repaint it. It'll still take a couple of coats just to sort of seal the plastic and then get it the same as the rest of it, but that's okay. So whilst that is drying, I'm going to start assembling these. So if you remember, they've got little rebates and the hull cut out behind. The reason being, and this is so satisfying, again, lots of trial and error, that just sits in there beautifully. So I can put that in there, turn it over, drip a bit of glue around there, a couple of three blodgies, that'll soak out and stick it in. Let's put it to the test. We'll hold that and then just go blob, blob, blob. And then turn it over. And in fact, I reckon I'm going to do all the ones because while that's setting now, I don't want to risk turning it over and putting the next one in because it might fall out. So I'll do all the ones, all the twos, etc. etc. But can you imagine how fiddly it would have been to have circular ones? Having to line each one up carefully, twisting it so it's perpendicular to the centre and then putting glue on, possibly gluing it first, putting glue on the back, then putting it in, having to position it quickly. A recipe for disaster, if you don't mind me saying. Whereas this way, it turns into a joy. It is actually very joyful, or enjoyable doing this, that's the word. It's very satisfying creating something like this, especially having designed it to solve initial problems that could have been insurmountable. But yeah, very pleased. Look at that! Ten beautiful dials! And you may think, hang on a minute, he's got the numbers the wrong way around because it's being driven by a gear. And that's what I originally thought, and I'm so glad I checked and figured it out because, in fact, the hand, the pointer is stationary on this and the numbers turn so it cancels out the effect and it needs to be the same way round but I did double check I hasten to add here's the one that I sanded down and you can see what I mean by how long it takes to blend in some a change when you've used wet and dry to sand it down smooth it down this has had about three coats on and it still stands out in the right light in the straight on it doesn't really but uh, I'm going to have to put another couple of light coats on and then that will be fine. It's lovely assembling these kits, it really is to be so busy and have so many things to do and not have to wait for anything because tons of other stuff. Someone, a very nice person, and apologies for not remembering the name, but they contacted me on Etsy, and, I think, and asked whether um, the chronograph, this, was available as a kit. And I got back to them and said, no, I mean it takes really, a kit has to be designed from scratch to ensure that everything is achievable without any special tools or equipment but now I have got into building these and remembering everything about them I think it would be feasible to have a kit I mean I, I enjoyed putting these dials together so much it would be lovely for other people to sit in the privacy of their own home and uh, glue all the numbers on it would be lovely and there's so many other bits that are nice to do I think what I'm going to do bearing that in mind, is to finish these, these ten, and then give it some thought and see. I'm sort of remembering the whole process in the back of my mind and just see, think about the feasibility of it, but I think it might be possible to watch this space. Oh, and I realised I haven't got many Nepnet Throbwell kits left. Fantastic, I only finished making them the other week or month. So I last night did a little stock take of all the bits that I've got already to make another 10 Nemnet Throbwell kitchen timer kits. I've got some bits but not very many which is good because I haven't got a load of stuff sitting around unnecessarily. So last night I sat on the, over the hot computer and placed orders for all the bits for another 10. 
So whilst these finish drying, I am going to get these bits done. This time I've done it slightly differently. I've glued on, in the past, the last lot, I did this valve thing separately and, and fixed them all together later and the same with these spacers, but this time it just speeds things up. So I've glued those on, glued that on, and I can spray them all up in one go. Although I think, so I completely forgot about spray paint. I forgot I was going to be doing this and I think I've nearly run out. This is the last can, so I've ordered some more. So we'll see how much we get on. I might be able to get one coat or something. Onto the twiddly coil piece of pipe, copper pipe. Now originally I used brazing or welding rod. I think it's, it's welding rod it must be. Because it's got a steel centre and copper coated to protect it from the steel from um, going rusty. Oxidising, uh, there's another word, can't remember it. Now to turn that into this, repeatedly, I come up and made one of these, well one of these, I made this thing. And what it does is you clamp it in the lathe, um, one end here, and then you slowly turn the lathe by hand, I hasten to add. Otherwise this would definitely be a recipe for disaster. But this time, brilliant company, again I've got no links or relations to them. The Scientific Wire Company, it's a UK based company, they sell every conceivable type of wire and metal wire, well, wire I suppose. So I ordered, so I think this is such a pain to do, it really is, and then you get it nearly right on this and then you have to get a, a screwdriver and bend and push and sometimes the copper gets scraped off because of the forces and friction and you see silver through and it's really is very difficult, it's quite a difficult thing because this has to fit so accurately on the clock. This was my new idea, buy some 3.3mm diameter copper wire. So this is copper all the way through, it's not that expensive. And obviously I should say it's because copper is far more uh, far more flexible than, oh, words are failing me. Malleable, that's it. Copper is far more malleable than steel, mod steel. Right, this is the most cramped part of the workshop, so apologies if it all goes out of focus and stuff. I've got this clamped here in that slot. I've figured out which way around to work this. I mean, here's one I prepared earlier. Is it? Oh. How many times does that go around then? Not bad. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it is this one. Yep, yeah, solid copper. Yeah. I managed to get it off the brass former and it still needed a little bit of bending and things but it's far easier, it's not as malleable as I thought it would be but I suppose 33 millimeters is quite thick for copper. The, good, the other good thing about using a roll of copper such as this beautiful reel is that I don't have to waste so much. Originally using these 300, oh, I don't know what, 330 millimeters long pieces of welding rod it meant I could I think I could only get one of the coils out of each one so this works out far more efficient also I dispense with the lovely cotton gloves because it's they're too slippery and also it just you lose the tactility you lose the feel of the material with which you're working etc 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 especially now I've added a wire support system so I can feed it directly onto the I think they call mandrels if memory serves. Thankfully I've just had enough paint to do the two and a bit coats on these that's great now I must stop and go and edit another video together on the new super slow computer because of the 330 quid graphics board that I added. How does that work? As always, thanks very much for watching and I'll put links to my Etsy shop and website in the description. Fabulous.